So I'm outside here on this lovely winter day to test this Ruko F11 GIM 2. This is also known as the SJRC F11S. So I asked Ruko, what's, what's updated? What's new about this drone? And they said, well, the range, uh, it should have better range, I believe 3,000 meters. Uh, I said, is there anything else different? They said, well, I don't know, but maybe you could test it and find out. I thought that was an interesting answer. So uh, I am gonna test it and find out. This thing's about $450 on Amazon. Uh, if you buy the SGRC version, it's a little over $200. You can get that on Banggood. But anyway, we're gonna test this thing, see if it's any different and if it's any good. Now, this is not how I'd probably recommend flying a drone on a winter day. Actually, Chris is doing the same thing right now and he's doing all the things you should to fly in the snow. I'm just gonna fly it in the snow and see what happens. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so I'm back from flying this thing outside in the snow and let me just tell you, not something that I recommend you do. I had a handful of issues uh, with the lens fogging up, the gimbal getting stuck, uh, snow everywhere, cold hands, <laughs> flying outside in the cold in the snow. Not something I'd recommend you do. Not with this drone for sure. Now Chris is actually outside flying today as well and he's gonna show you how to do it if it's something you need to be doing. Anyway, let's talk about what we have here with the Ruko F11 GIM 2. Now, this is an updated version of the GIM 1, which is actually a drone made by SJRC. It's sold as the SJRC F11, and the GIM 2 version, also known as the F11S version, uh, just means you have better range. They say it has a built-in Wi-Fi repeater. Does it have better range? Yeah. I am not ever going to fly one of these F11 drones outside of my visual line of sight. And I don't recommend that you do either. They're just consistently inconsistent. I've flown a handful of F11s, uh, at least for five of them. And each one is a little bit different. And I don't like the way really any of them fly. Um, they're just kind of twitchy. Uh, sometimes you get the, the toilet bowl effect going on. Uh, they're just not a polished product, whether you buy the Ruko or the F11. Now, I'm not saying there aren't some that aren't really good. I'm, I know that there are. I've talked to people that really love this drone. As a beginner drone, it's not bad. It has some uh, beginner features. It has some intelligent features. It does have GPS stability. Um, but it's not going to be on par with something like a DJI Mini or a DJI Mini 2. Which is interesting because this guy, the Ruko F11 GIM 2, sold on Amazon, it's about $450. Now for $450, you could also buy a DJI Mini 2. And that is a far superior drone to this. So if that's your price range, you want that. It's more stable, it has a better camera, it has better flight modes. Um, it's way more reliable. And it's actually smaller and under 250 grams, so there's a whole lot of regulatory reasons why you want that. But you know what, you can also buy this thing uh, from SJRC, uh, the F11s, just over $200, the F11S, which is the GIM 2, which is what I have here, um, that's like $220. So there are some advantages if you want to spend a little bit less. I'd still recommend saving a little bit more by the Mini SE from DJI. That is basically the Mini 2 minus the range, which is still gonna be better than this one anyway. But the Ruko uh, F11 or SJRC F11 do have a few things that the Minis from DJI don't, and that is waypoints. They have follow me. They even have like an active track-ish follow me where it will lock onto the subject and kind of follow it left and right. It won't follow it, follow it, but uh, it'll do that. And the follow me mode that does work with this uh, will follow your phone. So it's GPS based where it, it basically locks on your phone and it'll follow you around that way. And that works okay. I don't recommend flying on a day like this, but hey, let's get it in the air. All right, so we're gonna look at a little bit of video coming out of this drone. Annoyingly, it did not save on the SD card. I don't know why, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So this saved on my phone, which is nice. It's like a nice little backup, but I would have preferred had it been on an SD card because the quality 
will be just a little bit better. At some point during this flight, the gimbal locks up on me. I don't know if it was because of the wind, the cold, the wet. Um, either way, it is, again, working for me, but you can just kind of see it does a decent job of stabilizing the footage. The footage is okay. Here's where the gimbal is. It's just crooked. It's sideways. Uh, why that happened, I don't know. Again, I'm not putting this in, in a very good situation uh, for it to fly, but you know, you gotta you gotta push these things to see what they're they're capable of. You know, there are are some things I do like about this drone. The controller is really well laid out. You do have a digital zoom wheel, which is something that even the Mavic Three doesn't have. Interestingly enough, you can angle the gimbal up and down, which is nice. It has three different speeds. It's a decent beginner drone. The hardware is really nice. It's, it these. F11 drones just suffer from from poor implementation. You know, it, it's not bad, um, and maybe you get a really good one, um, but I'd not. Um, I've had a few of them, and they're just consistently inconsistent. Now let's look at a little bit of footage. Uh, this is from the old uh, F11, uh, older footage, um, saved to an SD card, and it, you know, you can get good footage out of one of these things. It's still not going to be on par with, say, a DJI product. It, it just isn't going to, but it's also, it could be a little bit cheaper um, if you go uh, ordering from Banggood. Now, I do like the waypoints. They worked really well. Chris uh, tested them out. You know, you basically tell the drone where to go. You confirm uh, the flight path and it'll fly. It'll fly that flight path for you, which is which is really cool. You know, the, uh, the uh, follow me mode, uh, the visual based system is cool, but... It's not, I wouldn't really call it a follow me mode, just kind of will yaw the drone. You can see it's following Chris here and it lost him pretty easily and no, it, it isn't going to pick him up. So, you know, the, yeah, there are some advantages of this drone over some of the others. You get a nice little carrying case, but at the end of the day, not going to be the best drone for your buck. Okay, so for comparison's sake, this is footage from the DJI Mini SE. That's the $300 mini drone from DJI. Now it shoots 2.7K video, not 4K, but I think the quality here on the 2.7K is far superior than any 4K on any drone that you're going to get from SJRC or Ruko. That's my opinion. Maybe you think differently, but I think this is pretty darn crisp. I like the colors coming out of this drone. I like the stability. I like the flight modes. And for $300, you really can't beat it. Now, if you want to upgrade to 4K, go with the Mini 2. Or if you're okay with what you saw earlier, grab a Ruko. But at the end of the day, I can't say that I'd recommend buying the Ruko at $450. It just isn't a bargain. Um, the F11 from SJRC, better deal, but I'd still, again, lean towards the Mini or the Mini SE. Anyway, if you want to learn how to fly in the snow, make sure you click that subscribe button because Chris is making a video on how to do it right. This was not how you do it. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If it was, give us a thumbs up. If not, thumb it down. Tell us what we could do better. Make sure you check out our website, halfchrome.com. And if you want a free drone, we give one away once a month to a lucky Patreon subscriber on our live streams, which are typically Sunday nights. Good luck, everyone, and happy flying.